family of survivors. It's your sister, soul survivor. I am your host of Healthy Healing and Living, and I am also a repast specialist. Last week, I went over all the benefits of becoming a caregiver. Now, this week, I want to cover the emotional side of being a caregiver because we both know that there's two sides to every story, as my mom used to always say. So, Today, I want to cover 10 of the emotional benefits or the emotional uh, side of a caregiver as well as this will be part one and then I'll do part two of 10 more. So let's get on with it. Number one, ambivalent. Me and my uncle both, he's an 86 year old um, who I take care of. I've been taking care of him for a month, a year now. He has dementia, and so before we moved him into our home, we both went up and down, back and forth. I was going, should I do it? Should I not do it? Um, and he was like, I, I, I don't want to go. I want to go. But you know, we were both emotional. Emotions was everywhere. This was new to both of us, and so I knew that he wanted to stay in his home. But being that he's getting up in age and he's forgetting, I knew I needed to take another course of action. He understood it, he kind of fought against it, but we made the decision. And what I would say for everyone, every care uh, giver, taking care of an elderly, disabled uh, person or a child, just be flexible. Be flexible with the process because you never know which way it's going to go, but be firm. And so I was firm on, you know, taking the steps of even making a decision whether or not to move Uncle in and um, making sure that he was comfortable with all the steps as we proceeded on. So be flexible. I would say be flexible uh, when it comes to ambulance. Okay. Anger. Number two, anger. I think my uncle was more angry <laughs> than I was because he fought against the whole process. Not the whole process, but he was really trying hard to convince me, hey, I need to stay here because of my pinochle partners. Uh, I got, I'm on two bowling leagues. I don't want to be in your way. And he was really trying to convince me, but knowing that he couldn't, he was kind of getting angry with me. And number three is that some anxiety that he was going through too because it was very confusing for him. And he just, he felt like I was coming in and taking over. But I was trying to make the process as smooth as possible. And that's what we have to do as, as caregivers to calm those emotional uh, feelings that our uh, care receiver or our loved ones is uh, uh, feeling. We have to calm that down as a caregiver. Look, uncle, it's gonna be all right. There's no need to get upset. You know, just relax. Let's just get through this. It's, everything's gonna be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. But yeah, when he gets angry and anxiety, and it can kind of rub off on me or can, your uh, loved ones, anxiety and anger can rub off on you, but we have to calm it down. But those are some of the emotional things that we go through as a caregiver. Now, boredism. Some may feel like, you know, uh, I'm bored with doing the same thing day in, day out. You know, your loved one may not be, may be bedridden, you know. Uh, you're having to feed them, you're having to change them, and you don't have a team to work with you. I would suggest to get you a team from somewhere. Uh, talk to some social workers, talk to your family, you know. Uh, just exert your whole the whole process of you know being bored with what you're doing try to get some fun out of it some kind of way you know um i don't deal with boredom too much with my uncle because my uncle is pretty spunky and he's excited he's happy he's live so um i do see him sometimes just sitting and staring just into space just staring and it seems like he's bored but I, I, sometimes I, hey, uncle, you all right? I tap him, you okay, you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll, you know. 
but that doesn't mean he's bored. It, it seems like he's bored, but <clears throat> that's some of the things that I deal with with him on that area. But in that area, but for you, if you're doing the same thing day in and day out, please get some help from somewhere. Exhaust every avenue that you can to get some help. Family, social workers, counselors, you name it, do it because um, that is an uh, emotional side effect that can really make things worse because um, it can be enjoying for a lot of people, you know, that's, that's caring for your loved ones. But we have to make it that, you know. But I also understand the downside of it as well when you don't feel like you have any help. So um, take care of that battery and everything will be all right. Okay, number five, crankiness and irritability. You know, that goes hand in hand. Sometimes I notice that my uncle gets real cranky. Um, the last time he got cranky, well, when we, 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 we went traveling and we were about to miss our plane. And when we're not on time, we have to be on time. See, he's military, he's ex-military. And uh, so am I, but he is just stickling the stick. It's gotta be dressed right, dress, everything, everything, you know. In order, just, just, just right, just like he's still in the military. So if we're like a minute late or running behind, it stresses him out. So he gets cranky, he gets irritable, and he stresses out. And it causes me to like, okay, I'm going with, it's going to be okay. That's, you know, our emotions is just way off the charts, way off the chart. But what I noticed that if I do everything, or just do everything real early, that, that makes peaceful flowing right there for all of us. Everything is just in peace. And, but if, when I'm rushing him, he's going to be cranky and irritable, and he's going to start fussing. He's, I may even get cussed out. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. And he may cut, tell somebody else. That he's going to take it out on somebody because he's cranky, he's irritable, and he's tired of it. So to eliminate that, I just know we need to be extra, extra, extra early and on time on everything. I can't be late because I already know what's going to come behind that. So I suggest you, with, with whatever your area is in that area, uh, with your loved ones, I know for me, when I rush my uh, my uncle, that's the result and we're just going to have to be early on everything. Okay, that's number five. Number six, depression and sadness. Now I personally have I haven't dealt with depression or sadness, um, but I noticed that my uncle has, and that was one of the reasons why I went to Atlanta, Georgia to move him here, because he was calling me and telling me how depressed he was, he was sad, and he wanted to commit suicide. You know, those were his thoughts. And I think, I, I do believe it was from loneliness, even though he was in, in Pinocchio and uh, bowling, I do believe that he just got, you know, spurts of being lonely by himself, and he knows that he's not all there, so he would get sad and depressed. So, ooh, excuse me, what I would do in that area to keep the sadness and depression down, just speak life to him. Uncle, it's going to be all right. You don't have to feel this way. I'm here for you. I'm here with you. I'm going to go through with you just reassuring our loved ones that it's going to be all right. We all get these emotions. We all get this, this feeling that you're having. And it's okay to feel this way. This too shall pass. It's going to be all out the way. Okay. Um, number seven, disgust. Have you ever been disgusted with your loved one? And some of the things that they do, say, where they, you know, just, just discuss you. Maybe the way they may eat. If you're feeding them, they got food everywhere. Um, all I can say to that, and you just gotta get a, a tough stomach, <laughs> you know, because some some people are cleaning their loved ones up, and the food is everywhere, and they may be slanging food or whatever. You gotta have a tough stomach, and back to that team again. I can't express a team. I, so much. I, I can't uh, express it enough because the team is what um, I've been blessed with and I, I pray that a lot of other caregivers
can get a good supportive team, you know, like I have, or even better, because if teamwork definitely makes the dream work. I'm telling you, without my family and my family, with, with my fa family is my friends who are just like blood family, but they're there for me and uncle, and they support us 100 and. 10%. When I call them, they're there. Um, so I, I really can't speak for myself on being disgusted with anything that my uncle's done or we've experienced. I'm not disgusted with, with any of the process. Embarrassment, uh, number eight, embarrassment. Have I ever been embarrassed by uncle? I would have to say yes, because sometimes <laughs> we go places and my uncle said, I need a job. I need some money. And I and he, he's jokingly saying this, but I'm like, uncle, you don't need a job already work. You retire, you have enough. We have enough. Me, my income, your income, we're fine. We don't need all the extras, no, you know. And uh, I was just playing with him, but sometimes to me, that, that would be a little embarrassment. Not a big thing to be embarrassed behind, but the way he says it, like, like we're just poor. We're in, we're living in poverty. I need a job. I need money. <laughs> and he make it seem like he's really doing. They looking at him like he needs a job. <laughs> so it can be a little embarrassing. Not not a lot, but I, I do experience a little embarrassing in that area. So and then when he goes go tell somebody how you feel. Oh my God. It, it may not even be that person's. <laughs> <laughs> responsibility like why we didn't get it on the plane and why we're still here whatever but he'll take it out on him well why the plane ain't going nowhere well why aren't we still here and I didn't pay my money for this <laughs> so it's funny but it can be a little embarrassing too it's like uncle just calm down that's my whole thing through the whole situation just calm down please just calm down let me just take care of this so I may sit him down and he'll he'll calm down for a little bit, but you know, embarrass yeah. I have been a little bit, I have to admit it. I probably embarrass him too. <laughs> Some of the things I do. So number nine, fear. I had fear of uh, becoming his caregiver. I, I really did have a lot of fear because like I said in my last video, I, I heard a lot of negative things and I didn't hear any positive things behind it. I knew that I was doing the right thing by going to get him, but I did have some fear in going to get him, moving him here, and how he was going to be, and so on and so forth. So I did experience some fear, and I believe he experienced some too, moving him out of his comfort zone, and um, in a new place, and new, he had to make new friends. So that both goes both ways, and how we handle that is just embrace the fear, and be flexible. <laughs> Every time we got afraid of what may happen, I just embraced it and I talked uncle through and say, uncle, it's gonna be all right. It's, it's gonna be all right through all of it. Number 10, frustration. Yes, frustration, a biggie, 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 yes. I have been frustrated with the system. Um, different, um, Big corporations, um, like his phone company, for one, that had him on this old plan forever and ever and wouldn't give him a break. And then when I called and tried to tell him, look, he's an elderly man, how come he's still paying all this money for this? They had no sympathy at all. So, of course, I got frustrated because first time me seeing what they're doing to our elderly. I've heard about it, like I said in the past. I've heard about it, but this is how I experienced it. The big corporations taking advantage of elderly because they have monies maybe coming out of their check to pay their light bill, their cable bill, or whatever, and they still have them on this old system because nobody called in and told them that they wanted to save some money, you know? And so, of course, I've got frustrated many a time with that, but, um, took care of that, the way we cope with that. I went to the big corporations and talked to them and said, look, he's 86 years old, out of this, out of that. He's got some dementia. Can you guys 
uh, you know, kind of work with him? Can, can you work with him on this bill? What, what can we do to better this? What can we do to bring it down? What can we do to, to, to lessen my frustration? Because right now I'm ready to cut y'all off <laughs> behind my uncle. And so um, I, I've experienced a lot of frustration and those are some of the side effects of a caregiver. And the biggest frustration I've experienced is with the VA hospital. They had my uncle down as deceased, dead, dead, since 1995. But here's the kicker. Every time he went up there to get care, he got it. Until I started digging in the paperwork and trying to find out, the, you know, different things. And then all of a sudden he came out. Then they couldn't take care of him in, in this area and couldn't do that. I had to go through all this, this paperwork of uh, showing proof that he was still alive. Somebody had the same name, same last name, same birthday that got tangled up somewhere in within the, the system and they had him. So those are some of the, the uh, emotion, the, the emotional side of being a caregiver. That some of the feelings that we have to go through, and how we manage to get through. And I would recommend everybody be flexible, be peaceful, and know that we cannot take care of everything. We cannot. Some things we're gonna have to, you know, allow to just just flow on. Everything is not going to be to where we can just resolve everything. We have to be flexible, keep the peace, keep the love flowing, and everything will be just fine. But we're gonna have, we're gonna go through some emotions. But if only we were perfect. See, we're not perfect. <laughs> so we, we're gonna experience those, but know that these emotions will pass. Just like we put on clothes every day, just like we wash our face. We wash our face, it's gonna dry. You know, we put on these clothes, they, you know, they, they're going to fit or they're not going to fit. We're going to have some emotions. We're going to have them. So be flexible. Keep the love flowing. Love your loved ones no matter what. And also, if you're following me on this, the emotional side, share with me some of the emotions that you're going through with your loved ones and how you're dealing with them with them so um it can be a help for someone else that's taking care of their loved one okay until next week we're going to give the other 10 emotional um sides of being a caregiver please if you like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up comment let me know uh what you think or what video you think i should do next okay and share all caregivers, we just love to share. So if you like, share with someone that can benefit from this, this video. Okay, until next time, survivors, peace and love.